my name is Kelly Pierre. Um, welcome to, you know, Center During COVID. Um, this, you know, ev event is really about just, you know, providing resources to, you know, our our community during, during like this trying time. So um, just, you know, overall, like, sure, like everyone is, is aware of you know, what's been happening. And the fact that, um, you know, the, the virus is, uh, is really affecting us like most, most. So, you know, as of right now, just want to take, you know, a couple of seconds uh, to, you know, um, just have a moment of silence. You know, it is also Memorial Day, but, you know, to, to also remember the, the victims who, you know, have succumbed to the virus. So, you, know, you can just take some time out and I think then we'll just have a moment of silence to you know, honor them. So, um, basically, uh, you know, uh, my name is Kelly P. I'm, I'm excited to have um, Dr. Dana Collins as well as um, Karan Allen. And, you know, like, um, you know, we, we really just, you know, kind of came together to, you know, discuss, you know, uh, you know, COVID, the way that, you know, it's, it's affecting our community, ways in which we can also, uh, you know, take take time to, you know, like really be aware of like where we are and um, and just be able to, you know, like work through this, this you know, um, pandemic to, together. So, um, you know, a little bit about, you know, All Access Golf is just, you know, really a, a company, um, but the, the underlying story is that, um, well, Access Golf was really, you know, started when, you know, I was unemployed, you know, I was really looking for work. And through learning the game um, of, of golf, like, uh, I really learned a lot just as far as, you know, life in, in general, right? So um, I learned a lot about uh, the mental aspect that the, that the game provides, right? And this is why, you know, it's transferable because, um, a lot of the mental aspects that you find in the game is, you know, what you also take on in, in life as well. So um, that being said, um, like I've, I've been able to really, you know, like be able to learn about how, uh, how the game, you know, affects you, you know, mentally, but, you know, most importantly, like it's, it's helped me in, in my life in, in general. Right, so um, it also uh, it also was an escape during during like my you know like my, like whole time you know I wasn't working for like three years, um, and you know I really use it as an escape to um, to you know be able to have a place to you know clear my mind and and everything like that. Now um, that being said. Um, it's since, you know, a lot of people are dealing with unemployment, I think the numbers now is, is around like uh, 30 million. Um, it's, it's, you know, really important that, you know, we, we you know, try and keep our, our like heads level and, you know, like also be able to be aware of any uh, resources that may be, you know, available for us, right? Um, so this is why, you know, like, uh, to, um, you know, like guests that are like so important. We have, you know, Quran, who's, you know, really, you know, in, in the community, like he, he's aware of, you know, a lot of things that, you know, are happening, like within um, Brooklyn, um, specifically, you know, East New York, you know, Canar Canarsie as well. And he's also, you know, running for, uh, for Senate. Excuse me. And this is this is why, you know, like he can, you know, provide a, you know, great perspective as to, you know, what's what's out there if you may, you know, need any help. And then we also have Dr. Uh, Dana Collins, who, you know, is a, you know, mental health expert. She's you know, also the uh, president elect of the New York Association of um, Black Psychologists. So, you know, with, with that being said, um, I want to turn it over to uh, Karan. And you know he'll 
you know, introduce himself and, and just be able to, you know, like speak with you guys. So <clears throat> thank you so much, Kelly, the team at uh, All Access Golf for putting together this program. Um, uh, I guess I'm prematurely saying thank you to Dana for the information that she's going to provide. Uh, definitely looking forward to it because we we can we can all use what you're to give us. Um, but I, I can't think of a better way for us to spend, you know, um, African Liberation Day, Memorial Day, or whatever day you're recognizing within this this sphere and scope and conversation. Um, as introduced, you know, I'm Alan. I'm a candidate for Senatorial District 19, which encompasses some of the greatest communities. Uh, hopefully some of you are members of those communities, but if you're not, you can always move. Um, <laughs> it's New York, Brownsville, Canarsie, Sheepshead Bay, um, Mill Basin, Old Mill Basin, Georgetown. There, it covers a, a vast area. Um, and just looking forward to uh, representing those people uh, the people of Senatorial District 19 uh, correctly. Um, but in not making this uh, a sort of campaign-like discussion, um, I really want to get into what Kelly has brought me in here for. Um, just understanding that, you know, navigating your local communities can help um, many, help you and help your neighbors in ways that you, you probably are not aware. Um, so I, I'm glad Kelly shared his um his sto his story um about him not having a job i have a similar uh story i think we all got stories like that but my story um with not uh having employment at a specific point in my life it actually allowed for me to understand the local framework of my community and it relates to this discussion um like it it, it meshes seamlessly um, when I wasn't able to find a job upon graduating college, it allowed me to look back and not look at whatever my prospect was going to be for getting a job. And in looking back, I had to look inward into my local community and try to figure out where, where the resources were or how I can help, because that's what they tell you. You go to college, you get your education, you come back, and you can save us, you can help us, you know, you can do all of those things. So I was looking for ways in which that I can help, where, where can I get in? I got involved with a local CBO, um, it, Tomorrow's Leaders New York City, which works with overage middle school students. Um, so I got plugged into the schools, um, and in trying to promote the organization and get more um, resources connected to it, I stumbled upon my local community board. And in stumbling upon my local community board, this is where the, the politics is, is inseparable from all of this. You know, there's a saying that all politics is local, right? And that saying is, is super true. It, it goes, it, it, it works exactly the same for the resources. All of the resources that you see on TV coming down from the federal government, coming down from the state, ends up hitting your local community in some way, shape, and form. So in helping you, everyone who's attending and is a part of this discussion and dialogue, my thing is to how can I help you navigate from where you're at? So everybody lives somewhere. Um, you know, even if you live in a shelter, you, you live somewhere, right? You live in a house, you live on a block, you live in an apartment complex, you live in a condo. You know, there's always some form of local leadership connected to all of that. Um, they say that your first experience with government happens when you walk outside of your house. Right there, there is a possible, possible, it depends on what community you're in, there's a block association. If you have a local block association um, before you are connected to you in, in where you live, then there's a leadership, a leadership structure associated with it. You have the president of that block association, you have the vice president, you have that, that normal structure, and they are connected to specific resources just by being the president because of how the local social infrastructure works. The same is proven if you live in a NYCHA development. There is local tenant leadership. It's the same if you live in a bunch of Michelama developments. 
there is a local leadership established in most complexes. If there isn't one, this is how you get involved. This is how you make a difference. This is how you, you can actually affect the change in things that are going on around you. Why am I saying all of this? Because when you see the governor do his everyday press conferences and he talks these numbers that you can't fathom hitting and affecting you when you're trying to navigate resources in this global pandemic. You're overwhelmed by all of the things going on. Those numbers mean something because at some point they reach the local community. And trust me, there's a lot of emails being sent out with so many links. You keep clicking and you'll go down the wormhole. It's very, very difficult to navigate if you don't have the patience or, or the understanding. So um, in helping you gain the understanding and navigating it, I talked about your local community board um, before uh, in the beginning of this presentation. Local community boards are municipal bodies um, that are responsible for the enhancement of social, social uh, of service delivery to your local community. Your community board members, 50 people um, that either live, work, or have a special relationship to your community are the board members, but there is a district office um, team that is a part of the nine to five staff that make that essentially is responsible for working in lieu of those, those board members because um, they serve on a voluntary basis. Your community board is your local information hub. It, the community board gets everything from the mayor's office, the governor's office, the local elected officials in terms of information and resources. How do I know that? My day job. I am the deputy district manager for Brooklyn Community Board 5, which covers East New York, surprise, surprise, Highland, Starrett City, and all the other new lots, local uh, communities <laughs> that you associate with East New York. Um, and the, the community boards are often overlooked as a space that people should go to. But I think in this time, you see the, the importance of community boards um, with how information is relayed, um, and this could be ranging from looking for a mask to looking for food. Mm. Community boards are responsible for essentially gathering and collecting all of that information for um, the people of that local community. So I'll give one example um, and I'll just give a, a real breakdown of how you should see your community going forward. Um, Cause I don't want to be too long winded it's different when you don't have nobody talking back to you. You just are filling the time <laughs> with the breakdown that you have. Um, but the local infrastructure of your community, um, when, you, when you look to specific spaces and places for resources, every community throughout the five boroughs is covered by a community board. Um, and before I, well, when I finish my presentation, I'll be sure to put the link in the chat for you to check out and look up your own community board to kind of get connected if you're not already acquainted. Um, but every, everybody has a community board that is responsible for essentially, you know, providing this information to the general public. Um, and sometimes that's not enough. A lot of times when people think about local resources and information, they think about their local elected officials. They're a cog in all of that, but they're not the end all be all. So when you're navigating resources, specifically locally, it's always best to start local. Start on your block. Start on, with your tenant leadership. Outside of that, you have your local community board. Reach out to them and they provide you more than likely a comprehensive document with information in relation to COVID-19. Um, I know this again because it's, it's also my day job to provide and, 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 and present these sort of um, information and resources for community members as they continue to navigate throughout this in, entire time. Um, and community boards, community-based organizations. So in when, when I couldn't find my job, the job after graduating from school, getting involved with Tomorrow's Leaders New York City was so important. It was a local community-based organization that worked with these young people in the community, but because they were plugged in to everything that was happening and they needed to garner resources for their uh, the, the young people in the organization it it put me more 
into the community, but also it's serving a demographic of the community. So local community-based organizations are also a, a big help. One of the local organizations in East New York that is doing like phenomenal work is Man Up Incorporated. You know, a lot of people go to them for information and resources. So that's another way to navigate your community. Um, and the, the last thing I think that everybody um, really points to as they, they're supposed to be able to provide the resources is your local elected officials. And, and your local elected officials have so many different um, roles and responsibilities during the pandemic. Um, there are some critiques that they are worthy of, and there's some that they can't necessarily take all the blame for. Um, we're in an extremely unprecedented time with COVID-19, and in navigating the resources that you know we all need and deserve, you have to be greedy with going after the information. You have to be more determined than ever with going after the information, because it's out there and you just have to be able to find it. On our website, um, campaign website, we've put a, a, just a, a general guide for people um, looking for any and everything. And the example that I was presenting earlier, if we're talking about food, you know, because everybody needs food, there's so many different um, perspectives on food. And I'm not talking about what you like to eat. I'm talking about, um, if you can actually go out to get food because you've been tested positive, you know, that, that's a, a complication because you don't want to put anybody else at risk and you, you just don't want to do that. So when you think about food, how does that look in your local community? Every community has pantries, but most of the time we walk straight past them if we don't need it or we might tell somebody else about it. How do we find out about pantries? Your local community board, your local elected officials, all of them have some kind of pantry list that you can go to and check out. But specifically in, in this time, you have to go, you have to seek out the city, the city links and resources. And we have some of that on our website, which I'll put in the chat so that everybody can see. But the one specific web, um, website that you should check out is nyc.gov backslash get food. And I will write that in the chat. The reason I present that one, it, it's always the easiest one because it gives you so many different options of how you can get food. Whether you go, in, you, you go out to seek the food or you have the food delivered to you. That could help seniors, that could help people who are mobile, that could be help people who are um, COVID-19 positive. And Kelly, just a quick correction on um, the unemployment figures, it's 36 million now in the United States, um, folks that have filed for unemployment. The last I read. Um, and that was like Thursday or something like that. So when we look at it, everybody needs these information, needs information and resources. And it's always best because of how um, crazy the pandemic um, can really just pull, pull out. And I'm saying crazy, but like what it can do to our mental health by dealing with the d different systemic um, oppressive pieces that have only amplified in our communities due to the pandemic. Um, and in remembering everything that I have to say, I, I, before I close, um, please, if you have not done so already, do your census. Um, the census is so important for um, this entire experience that we ha we've had with the global pandemic and our communities. For the most part, when, not for the most part, the census is how we get resources to our communities. If we undercount ourselves by not filling out the census, we are going to get an undercount in resources in our communities. Now, don't get me wrong, our elected officials are responsible for fighting for our fair share of funding in the state and the city. And at this juncture, to us, they don't do enough of that. They don't make sure that our, our schools, our hospitals are fully funded. But in making, in drawing that connection to the census, this is where you take your power back within it. You fill out your census, you count your family, make sure that we get a complete count so that we can get complete funding so that when we cannot foresee a disaster like a global pandemic, we'll already be equipped with the resources and information to just, you know, prosper. And I know I said Memorial Day and African Liberation Day. It is also uh, Black 
Family Census Day. I did not make that up. I did not make that up. It is Black Family Census Day. Talk to your friends and family about the census. It is so important for us to just get it done. Three things about it. It's safe, easy, and important. Um, but in navigating your local, your resources, start local. Um, it'll save you some time and frustration. And um, if you need some help and assistance, uh, I'm more than happy. My team is more than happy to help you. And I'll be sure to drop all of the links to the things that I was speaking about in the chat. But that is my general overview about navigating resources. Uh, Kelly, again, thank you so much for allowing me the time to speak. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm passing it on. If Kelly's giving me more time, I'll uh, actually you 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 guys are, you guys like have have like free reign. But anything else you you wanna uh you wanna touch on, Karan? You you're free to do so. Okay, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, no, nah, I, I I definitely want to get to Dana's presentation. I just again thank you so much allow me the opportunity to speak about it. Um, I'm going to be very active in the chat because I don't, I don't believe in joining a Zoom meeting and speaking at great length and just being silent. <laughs> you know? uh, so I'll be very active in the chat. If there's anything else to say, you can see me there. Cool. So uh, we're going to also introduce uh, Dana Collins, who's the uh, president-elect of the New York uh, Association of Black Psychologists. So Dana, you have, you have the floor. Yes, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for um, being here today with us. I, I know there's a lot going on and this is usually not what people are doing over this holiday and I, the weather is getting a lot nicer. So the fact that you're here really uh, means a lot. Um, and thank you so much Karen for what you shared because I think that a lot of times anything having to do with politics can be like really kind of heady and you know confusing for people and I, I think it's really important to sort of break things down and help people to understand like specifically how um, they're being impacted how their communities are being impacted and um, options for response so thank you for that um, so I always, uh, whenever I have a discussion with people or give a talk or uh, whatever you want to call it, I like to do just a little bit of grounding. And I actually learned that grounding is something that is done in golf too. But um, the kind of grounding I'm talking about is just kind of um, coming to the present and settling into the present because there's a lot happening right now. There's the pandemic there's elections um, going on uh, coming up um, and so it can be really easy to get caught up in thinking about the future the past um, a lot of worrying and negative thinking but I just want us to try to as much as possible um, focus on what is happening now so just being here together so um, I want to invite everyone to just sort of take a comfortable uh, position, whether you're sitting, standing, just, just find something that feels comfortable for you. And I think most of us are sitting, so I'll just kind of talk about that. Um, so just notice what it feels like to be seated, uh, the point of contact. How does it feel like on your back? How does it feel underneath you? So just kind of lean into that feeling of stability and being here. And you might want to just take a few, few breaths to sort of help to settle you. Um, the next thing I want to invite everyone to do is to pick uh, a sense. So we have five senses. There's a sense of sight, there's smell, there's taste, feel, and then feeling, and then uh, hearing. Um, so pick a sense, maybe, maybe not taste, because that might not work as well right now unless you're eating something, but just based on what sense you picked, just notice three things around you. So I'll, I'll demonstrate. Um, I'm going to pick a um, sense of sight. Um, I see to the left there is a window. Um, 
in front of me, there is a toaster. And uh, sort of to the right of me, there is a painting. So just quickly pick three things. Okay. So the idea is, of that is just to, again, be sort of rooted in the now. And hopefully that sort of helps everyone to be less distracted about uh, with the past or the future and just sort of be here. So, all right, we'll um, move on from here. So um, today, Today I want us to uh, just kind of have a conversation about caring for ourselves and what does it mean to care for ourselves, uh, how do we do it, um, how do we know when we need to be taking care of ourselves because sometimes we can sort of lose touch with what's going on with ourselves and I want to have a little bit of discussion because um, I like to try to keep things interact and I also think it's really helpful for people to be just so, sort of sharing with each other. Um, and then I will offer some practical suggestions on things people can be doing, that we can be doing to, to care for ourselves. And my hope is really that this feels applicable, that everyone can take at least one or two things away from this discussion that they can um, that they can use to be sort of taking care of themselves and you know finding some some calm and some peace um, in these times. Um, so um, as Kelly mentioned, I'm the president-elect, uh, I'm Dr. Dana Collins, I'm the president-elect of uh, the uh, New York Association of Black Psychologists, so I just want to give a little bit of a plug. <laughs> um, so the New York Association of Black Psychologists is a chapter of um, the Association of Black Psychologists, which is the nationwide organization. And uh, the mission is pretty straightforward. It's uh, the liberation of uh, the African mind, empowerment of the African character, and the enlightenment and illumination of the African spirit. Um, so basically it's the upliftment, healing, and well-being of black people. Um, that's always a very important thing, but I think it's especially important now, and it's especially appropriate today, given that it's uh, African Liberation Day. Um, we really are at a point in time where we need to be paying special attention to our, our well-being, our, our mental health. Um, so uh, Kelly talked a little bit about why we as Black people are being differentially impacted by this. And there's a saying that people, some of you might be familiar with, it's um, when they catch a cold, meaning that the mainstream, we catch pneumonia. So, you know, when there's something negative going on, it, it impacts us um, differentially and that's you know as um kelly was saying for a number of different reasons uh a lot of uh, systemic racism historically and currently um uh right now you know we're being impacted because of that and also our uh, housing arrangements differential access to testing distrust and stigma about health care and then the underlying health conditions um, so, you know, what's happening for us right now really highlights pre-existing racial disparities. So it's, it's really putting us in touch with what we already know about how we are treated and impacted in this country. Um, and this reminder and impact has um, particular trauma and can bring up a lot of hopelessness, sadness, fear, anger, stress, a lot of negative emotions. Um, and it can be really easy right, right now to get just caught up and lost in that pain and suffering, those negative emotions. And it's important to acknowledge those things, but that shouldn't be where it ends. We don't want to just, um, you know, permanently get lost in the negative feelings. We want to know how to respond to them. Um, so be thinking about what we're doing to get through this. Um, as, as Black people, we really want to be remembering and leaning into our strengths and figuring what's working. Uh, we are a very resilient people. We have found a lot of um, 
a lot of ways to make things work. And I think one of the uh, ways that we have found to make it through is to come together. You know, we're, we're a collectivistic people and relying on and leaning on each other is, is really important, which um, is another reason I'm really happy we're here today. Um, so what I want us to focus on in our time together is what can we do? Um, so I want to start uh, to open it up for with, uh, with some discussion, for some discussion. Um, one thing I do want to say, though, is that um, we're not always necessarily aware of when we are struggling. Um, and it, we might not realize it until we're really far into it. And that, that can be for a lot of things reasons. It's um, one, we're pulled into a lot of different directions and just maybe aren't paying very much attention to ourselves. And I think also historically there's been this, um, the message that we have, as black people just have to be strong and keep going on all the time. Um, it's possible though to be strong and uh, care for ourselves at the same time. Um, by caring for ourselves we um, sort of reinforce that strength and ensure that we're able to maintain uh, that strength. Because we, we are human. Um, no matter how strong we are, we are human, we have limits. And really, if you think about all that we have been through, all, all the trauma, the, the generations of trauma, it makes sense that, you know, we would have some reaction to it and that we would need to, you know, respond to it in some ways. Some way. So, um, I want us to um, just take a minute to think about how, how do we know when we are feeling especially stressed out or sad or overwhelmed? Like what, what happens for us? Um, do we notice that we have trouble eating? Do we have trouble sleeping? Are we arguing with others a lot more? Are we having headaches? Are we having more negative thoughts? Um, so everyone just take a minute to think about like, what are signs? What are the signs? What are the symptoms that you're not doing as well? Um, and if people are comfortable, I want, um, I just want people to share, you know, one or two things that they notice within themselves, um, you know, when they're not doing as well. And, you know, if you're not really sure what the signs and symptoms are for you, what you can do is think about a recent time where it, you were really going through it where it was really hard and you know sort of what was coming up for you in terms of like your thinking in terms of your um what was happening in your body so just take a minute and then people um oh i have a couple of already already which is great so nightmares and eating too much definitely oh definitely yeah so those can be related to a lot of things uh that could be trauma it could be stress it could be anxiety tension in the muscles absolutely yeah our, our bodies uh can carry a lot of tension when we're overwhelmed especially in like our shoulders our throats isolation definitely um because sometimes it can just feel like too much to be around others headaches and migraines that's another really big one Okay, good, good. So I'm doing, I, I wanted us to do this so that people could get in touch with it for themselves. But also, I find that when we share in this way, people might realize, oh, yeah, that happens for me too, but I didn't really realize it. So some of those things uh, might resonate uh, with people. Okay, great. Um, and there's something else here. Let me see. Um, just anything that is an issue, oh, is amplified. Definitely, things can just feel all the more overwhelming. Yeah, and I, I, part of the reason, there's a lot of reasons that that happens, but when we get particularly stressed or overwhelmed, we just don't have the same capacity to respond to things in the same way, and so it, it just things feel more difficult. Okay, perfect. Thank you all for sharing. Um, so let's next talk about what do we do about it? How do we take care of ourselves? How do we find some peace? How do we find centeredness? How do we find happiness? Um, so I just want people to share some things that they do to one, maintain their 
their mental health or well-being or things that they do, you know, after they've noticed that, oh, I need to be doing something. So uh, take a minute um, and feel free to share, please. Um, I will share that um, being in nature is really, really important important to me and that's actually what I'm doing this weekend. I, I, I live in uh, Brooklyn but I'm um, between upstate New York and New Hampshire um, hiking this weekend. Uh, so everyone uh, please share. Okay, so looking at birds or the skies, wonderful, yeah. So that sounds like a little bit more of like uh, getting in touch with nature and just, uh, you know, another thing that's really nice about that is it's, that's something that you can do a lot of the time. Taking care of ourselves doesn't have to be like, oh, I go on vacation, I go to the spa. It can be something very accessible, cheap, very easy. Okay, um, I talk to my wife and try to talk through the problem. Okay, um, if it persists, I go for a run and go to my community garden. Wonderful, okay, so it sounds like there's sort of a, a plan here. So I, I initially do this, I um, um, rely on my social supports, my, my your wife. Um, if that doesn't do what I need it to do, uh, get some physical activity or go to the garden. Wonderful, very good. So something about movement, I, I want to say that's really important for a lot of reasons, but it can um, really get our endorphins going, which is important um, for uh, mental health. If, if people who run or do any kind of physical activity will probably notice that after a period of physical activity, you feel really good. And that's because your brain is release, releasing chemicals that you know help to reg regulate your mood. So. Um, Exercise is an important part of maintaining mental health. Uh, here's another one. The trails here in Staten Island are medicine for me. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So that combines a physical activity with nature. Wonderful. And, you know, people can also, uh, I know that people have already shared a few things, but feel free to, I think everyone, I think you can unmute yourselves. You can, you know, just say it if you would like. And if you just want to stick with the chat, that's fine too. Do it, uh, what you're comfortable with. Just give it um, maybe another 30 seconds before we move uh, forward. I make sure I etch out each day at least a small amount of time to do whatever I want, what comes to me intuitively, and not just focus on keeping up with deadlines or appointments mm. mm -hmm. yeah I'm so glad you said that Denise because um, one of the things you mentioned is doing you know sort of what feels good or what you need intuitively and you know being in touch with your intuition really means being uh, in touch with yourself having some awareness and the awareness is such a big part of doing any of these things you know we have to know that we need these things so thank you for sharing that hey uh michelle says i developed a new a new talent i didn't know i was artistic uh, i've done like 10 paintings since this started that's a really really good point um because as difficult as this is um there is some, some silver lining, uh, I found at least, I, I'll speak for myself. Um, you know, 
we are out of our routines and our worlds in some way have come, become a lot smaller because we're staying at home. So we have to make adjustments. And um, for some of that, that, that can mean like uh, discovering new things, uh, seeing things and looking at things in a different way. Uh, so yes, this can actually bring some opportunities. Okay. Appreciating my dog more. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, animals are really important for uh, happiness. Um, there, there's actually a lot of research that shows that um, having a pet can improve your mental health. And yeah, you know, if you are spending more time with another person or an animal, you probably get to know them in a different way. That sometimes can be difficult, but <laughs> it can also, um, there's something about it that can be nice too. I wanna mention that uh, Kieran uh, says that there is a newly open uh, Shirley Chisholm State Park uh, in East New York. So that would be a great thing for people to check out as long as you're continuing to social distance. Okay, all right. So, um, thank you everybody for sharing. I, I hope that, you know, um, people sort of got um, some ideas for things, uh, new things they can try out because again, this is, this can be a, a, an opportunity to try some new things. All right, uh, let me just make sure there is nothing else. Okay, perfect. All right, so I just want to um, do uh, or suggest a few things that we can be doing every day and these things are all quick easy they're all free um all right so uh, there's just four of them and i want to give credit to uh the website black w women for wellness check them out um so checking in checking in so start your day by checking in with yourself so again uh bring in some awareness and that can be awareness of like uh physical sensations, thoughts, emotions. Just check out what's happening with you. Um, determine what your needs are. Listen to your body. Listen to your body. Um, you get to decide the pace, uh, to decide your pace for the day and what routine will make the most sense. So based on, you know, what you find uh, during your check-in, sort of think about what kind of day makes sense for you. Uh, that's number one. Number two is breathe. Breathe. Uh, take five deep breaths. Um, you can always return to your breath when things become stressful, confusing, scary, or when you feel like uh, some uncertainty or needing to be more grounded. The breath is really important because it is always there and it doesn't take long to find. It's always something you can do. Um, gratitude. Um, people might have be familiar um, in some way with uh, um, the fact that um, there's, there's research showing that gratitude can really, um, cultivating gratitude, developing gratitude can improve the mood. Um, and it also helps you to focus on what is going right and sort of take, can take your mind off of what is um, it's not working so well. So just quickly list three to five things that you're grateful for um, each day. Uh, it helps to lift your spirit and helps your energy to shift to more positive. So that's another thing. Like when we are uh, in psychology, there's something called priming. And priming is sort of like, um, what's a good way to explain it? Um, you know, it, it, it helps you to notice um, prepares you to notice things. I'll put it that way. So, you know, we can prime ourselves to notice more negative things. And then if we're primed for negativity, we're more likely to see it. Uh, it but if we prime ourselves for positivity, we're more likely to see the positives. Um, and I'm not suggesting that everything needs to be positive all the time because that's not realistic, but, um, we can find the positives that's a great thing um okay so that's number three um number four is be kind so compassion 
don't judge how you're coping with this. Don't judge how others are coping. Um, you know, the, the president of uh, the Association of Black Psychologists, Dr. Theopia Jackson, has uh, said a few times, there's no script for this. We aren't really prepared for this situation because it's not something that we have been through before. Um, so be gentle, be kind with how you are responding to it because there's not really a right or wrong way to do it. We're all, we're all kind of figuring it out. Um, allow yourself to feel your feelings and give yourself the space to process anything that comes up for you, okay? Um, um, so I want to just end with having us um, just uh, recite a few proverbs, African proverbs together. Um, I think proverbs are, are really nice because they can help us to sort of ground ourselves in our, our culture and they can just, um, it, positive messages. It's always good to be repeating positive messages. So I'm gonna say, um, We'll just do three of them. I'm going to say them first and then we'll just all say them together, okay? So the first one, um, a family tie is like a tree. It can bend, but it cannot break, okay? So on a count of three, we're going to say it together, okay? And it, you can mute yourself or unmute, whatever you're comfortable with. Please be comfortable, okay? One, two, three. A family tie, a family tie tree. is like a tree. It can, it can bend, but it, but it can break. break. Perfect. Okay. Next one. However long the night, the dawn will break. So that just means that this is not forever. This is going to be over at some point. Okay. All right. One, two, three. However, However long the night, the dawn, the dawn will break. Okay. And one last one, and this, this uh, sort of goes back to our collectivism, our communalism, all right. So walk like you have 3,000 ancestors walking behind you, okay? Do it on the count of three. One, two, yeah. three. Walk as you have, as you have three. 300 ancestors walking behind you. All right. Thank you all so much uh, for being here and participating. I'm going to turn it back over to um, to Kelly. Oh, let me let me actually first say that um, Kelly's going to be sending out an email, and um, I've put together a resource list for different uh, additional ways we can sort of be uh, attending to our our well-being, our mental health. Um, you'll also see at the bottom of the page. Um, ways to, to keep in touch with New York Association of Black Psychologists. So we have a website, we have a, a mailing list where we uh, uh, periodically mail out uh, uh, or email out resources. We're also on social media, so please keep in touch. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dana, for that, Dr. Dana, for, for that. Um, are there like any questions uh, that anyone may have? Uh, I really did uh, enjoy that. Like it, it was those those proverbs are, are real powerful. Yes. <laughs> So if uh, anyone has, you know, any questions for, you know, doc, Dr. Dana or, you know, Karan, you could um, either unmute yourself or you can also uh, ask it like in, in the chat as well. Yes. So I, I, I have a, a quick question. So, uh, are there any uh, other um, events that, that you guys have like planned coming up? Yes, you know, I'm glad you asked that and I cannot believe I forgot. Um, <laughs> so actually on uh, the 30th, Saturday, we have a, uh, a 
event. So the New York Association of Black Psychologists has started, uh, it's called the Harambe Initiative. Harambe is Swahili for let's pull together. And it's just a way of like coming together during this difficult time. So uh, we have different events. So we have uh, sometimes it's discussion, sometimes it's like uh, uh, storytelling, uh, music, song, dance, it, it, you know, um, a, a variety of things. But uh, this Saturday, we're going to have um, um, African breath work. So one of our members is uh, trained in uh, African breath work, and she's going to lead us uh, through that. Um, let me see if I can find uh, Dr. Ma'at Lewis. Yes, Dr. Ma'at Lewis. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Denise. Yes. Um, you know what, I want to try to actually find the link. Oh, I think I can't find the link. I just got a new computer, so not everything is totally set up, but should be able to find it and I'll... Oh, yes. so uh, there's a question that asks, um, will that event be by Zoom? Yes, it is by Zoom. Um, and it's free and open to the public. Um, so anyone is welcome to join. You just have to uh, register. And I'm gonna, I think I, no, that's not it. Um, oh, I'm gonna uh, get this together. Um, please ask other questions in the meantime. I think I found In terms of events, um, and just, you know, dates to note, Election day is June 23rd, 2020. Early voting starts the 13th, if I'm not um, you know, wrong about that. But June 23rd okay. is election day. Um, that is, of course, where our energy and everything is going to be focused. Um, since the start of the pandemic, I am not Dr. Dana. But one of the things that we've done uh, since the start of the pandemic, every Wednesday, uh, we host something like this um, going live on, on Facebook. It's called Wellness Wednesday, um, 1 o'clock, 7 o'clock, um, in half-hour intervals, because we know everybody's kind of like fed up with all of the, the lives that are happening on social media. But we do these half-hour intervals, just check-ins with our friends, families, and supporters. Um, and we do like joint lives where you can come in and answer whatever is the like question of the day. Um, so we've asked in the past, well, how has productivity changed for you? Um, how have you defined it differently? Because everybody's going through like their own, um, you know, issues with the pandemic, you know, outside of, you know, just getting sick and, and worrying about everything that's going on. You know, some folks who have jobs still have supervisors that have completely um, changed how they supervise, manage, and it's... It, it, it's causing issues because folks are working from home, not because they want to, but because they're in the midst of a pandemic and there's a differentiation between all of that. So long story short, we host Wellness Wednesday to kind of talk through some of those things. Just, you know, it's it, it not scripted, you know, we don't have a bunch of stuff written out, but it's really just so you have a platform to, to kind of speak through these issues together. And of course, we do announcements about things that are, are coming up. So that would be like one event. If you could tune in and just uh, connect with us at www.koranfornewyork.com. It'll be in the chat. I, I don't know why I didn't put that in the chat. Um, but that's an event that we have coming up. June 23rd is a huge day for many reasons. Um, we are putting all of our energy to make sure that we can change the political infrastructure of our communities. Uh, June 23rd, not to make this about me, but June 23rd, I turned 30. It's my birthday. Um, oh, wow. So I would hope <laughs> that we can set, you know, it's in the cards, it's in the stars and all that. Um, I would hope that, you know, we can celebrate the, the result of the election, which we, we're pushing for victory. But even if it's not victory, let's celebrate the fact that we're still around because it, it's been quite a year already and we're just in May. So th there's a question, um, how can you uh, basically get like a, is there a link for an absentee ballot? Oh, um, so this week we're giving the ABCs of absentees. You know, that, that it, it sounds real cute, but it's, it's difficult. 
um, to try to get everybody to understand it. So you should have been mailed your absentee already. If you have not, you know, you have to put in a request. So instead of me giving you a short right now, I'm going to give you a little bit of work to stay connected so that we can give you the ABCs of absentees. Cool, cool. And uh, so uh, Dana put that the event is from 7 to 9 uh, Eastern Standard Time this Saturday. All are welcome. Uh, the email is nyabpsi1 at yahoo.com. And you can also follow them on uh, Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. So we'll we'll uh, we'll send out the uh, we'll send out the email along with uh, with you know the attachments you know for uh, Quran, um, you know his website um, and also uh, New York New York Association of of Black uh, Psychologists. Any anyone else with have any any questions? Any more questions? I have a question. I just want to make sure that we get the um, information for Wellness Wednesday. Mm. I know it's on Facebook, but uh, who's 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 Facebook is it? So we have um, uh, sen the senatorial page. Uh, I'll jump and grab that link right now and put it in the chat so that you can become connected with the page. All you have to do is like it and you'll, of course you'll be connected from there to our posts and updates and stuff like that. So when we put out videos, you can actually some, see some of the past Wellness Wednesdays. There, um, no two are the same, <laughs> just so you know. No two are the same. But um, I'm gonna get the page right now and just put it in the chat. Okay. And I had another question about uh, community boards because I think that's a really interesting, important idea. Um, can you talk about some of the different ways that individuals might um, become involved with or support a community board? Sort of what, what does it look like? So uh, community boards are responsible for putting together a I know how it is with, with all of these, <laughs> these working from home experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Something happened in the background. Y'all know how that goes. Um, <laughs> in staying connected with your community boards, community boards are responsible for having open meetings. Um, and the, these open meetings are, they range from their general committee meetings to a general board meeting, which would be like your, your, um, I'm abusing the word general, but your general introduction to community boards. So for community board five, there's always a set, any community board actually, there's a set day um, in the month that they have these, these general board meetings. These meetings are 10 months out of the year. So from September to June, you have the opportunity to attend them. With COVID-19, I don't think so many community boards have ever been online and have been working on their online presence. Mm -hmm. For Community Board 5, um, which of course, our general board meetings are always the fourth Wednesday of the month. So our meeting will actually be this, this Wednesday. Um, and if you connect with the, the Facebook or the website, Brooklyn Community, brooklyncb5.org, you can see that information. But for you, you know, don't feel overwhelmed going to your community board meeting or becoming connected in that, in that manner. Mm -hmm. Community boards are there for you, you know. Um, yeah. They're there for you. So you go to that community board meeting, that could be your first connection to it, but keeping up with it, it really depends on what their uh, communication apparatus is. So for our community board, we've had the website, um, as long as, I've been connected with the board, um, basically, and, and the Facebook. I was actually a former board member before I became, I was hired by the district office. And one of my duties as a board member was to bring us into the 21st century is how they dubbed it. You know, when I, before I came, became a board member, we had a website, we didn't have Facebook or anything like that. And you know, from 2013 to now, it's totally different. Now we're completely reliant on getting out information like that. So community board meetings 
can and do look like this, but it's on the WebEx system and not the Zoom. So be sure when you connect with your community board, go to a meeting. Um, I always say my job as a deputy district manager is to get you to go to one more meeting and then one more meeting and one more meeting. Um, it seems redundant, but that one more meeting can make a difference in your connection to what's going on around you. So that one more meeting. Thanks for that plug. I have one more question about that. Uh, is it pretty easy to find information about our community boards? Is, it, is there a, a central listing of them or how do we do that? So in the, I'll, I'll put it back in the chat, but I posted the, the link for you to look up your community board based on your oh. home address. Um, and even if it's not your home address, you can, you can look up anybody's community board. Oh, I see. Um, I see. Did, yeah, we get calls all the time from people who are not within our district trying to figure out their community board. And, you know, community boards, just so you understand, like, the, the structure of it, the community boards with the 50 members that are on it, there's a chair person, chairwoman, chairman, that essentially is a, supposed to be the guide for the 50 board members. Of course, they have an executive committee as well. In the district office, there's the district manager, and in our office, you know, district manager and deputy district manager, who's mm -hmm. responsible for the day-to-day -day activities, how things go, um, how we get information out, et cetera, et cetera. Every community board is unique in how they do it. You know, and you know, we're unique because of our demographics and then what we choose to use as information arms based on like how our community is. We know our community is on Facebook, so we have a Facebook page. You know, we know our community is on Twitter somewhat. So we have a Twitter that, of course, isn't as active as how the Facebook is because that's just the nature of the web. So people can go or just troll information um, to get there. Any other questions? Thank you. You got me into it, so I'm, I'm just ready. <laughs> I'm into it too, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. So uh, I guess this, this concludes. Thank you guys so much for just, you know, being able to, to like, you know, provide Thank you. resources. And what we'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll, um, we'll follow up and we're going to send an email to, to everyone um, with the resources as well. And let's, let's just, you know, stay in, this, stay in this fight and we'll all get through it together. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Kelly. Thank right. you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kelly. Right. Bye, everyone. Take care. Thank you.